I thought the needles were going to be a lot bigger and thicker, but they're, they're real short and thin, so it doesn't hurt. The shots I'm used to, that's the good thing. Like, it doesn't hurt. I was thinking to myself, I have to learn how to do this because mommy can't be around for, you know, for the rest of my life. So after that, I was like, this is it. This, it really doesn't hurt. So I got used to it. Diabetes shots are a lot different than, you know, take, getting blood taken, getting doctor shots. They're a lot less painful and you don't deal with them. You know, it's not so bad. It's not as bad as you think it is. Now let's talk about your meal plan. When you have diabetes, you need to pay much closer attention to what you eat and when you eat it. See, a person without diabetes produces insulin, but only when they eat. But since people with diabetes take injections, they have insulin in their system at all times. That means you need to have three meals and two to three snacks at pretty much the same time each day to make sure that there is always some food in your system to balance out the insulin you're taking. You should also limit high sugar foods so that your blood sugar doesn't get too high. But that doesn't mean you'll never have sweets again. You can still have a treat on special occasions, just like everyone else. Your dietitian will help you learn about your meal plan and healthy food choices. Did you know that exercise will lower your blood sugar level? That's right. So it's a very important part of your treatment plan for staying in balance. But remember, since exercise lowers your blood sugar, you might need an extra snack before doing any increased activity. So how will you know how well you're staying in balance? Well, although you might be able to feel when your sugar is either very low or very high, finger stick blood testing is the only way to know exactly how you're doing. That's why it's so important. You'll use a small drop of blood from your finger and a blood glucose meter to test your blood sugar. It's best to test at least four times a day, before each meal and your bedtime snack, as well as if you're not feeling well. If you didn't have diabetes, your blood sugar would usually be between 70 and 120. Your diabetes care team will help you set your blood sugar goals, which may vary based on your age or other factors. And if your sugars bounce around a little in the beginning, don't worry, that's normal. They will become more stable as time goes on. Entering your blood sugar results in your personal logbook will give you and your team the most accurate picture of the combination of insulin, diet, and exercise that's right for you. In the old days, people had to test their urine several times a day. Pretty gross, right? I mean, let's hear it for progress. Now you only have to test your urine for ketones if you're sick or if your blood sugar is very high. Now let's talk about a couple of things that you need to watch out for. The first is called a hypoglycemic or low blood sugar reaction. When you don't have enough to eat, are late for a meal or snack, or you were more active than usual, your blood sugar can get too low. Signs of low blood sugar are sweatiness, headache, hunger, or even stomach ache. In younger children, signs can include sleepiness or irritability. Like my legs feel weak, I get a headache, like I can't concentrate too much and like I can't walk too good. Well, I get really hungry and shaky and there's just this feeling I can't explain that happens in my tummy. Dizzy disoriented, and I get nasty. I'm mean to people, and you know, everybody's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, oh, my sugar's kinda low. And Cause I'm not generally a mean person, but uh, when my sugar's low, I get pretty nasty. It's easy to treat a low blood sugar reaction. Just have a small glass of juice and a snack if it's going to be a while before your next meal. Always remember to carry some form of sugar with you at all times. Sometimes when you first get diabetes, your vision can get a bit blurry. That's because your blood sugar was so high. Don't worry, this will improve over the next few weeks as your sugars get more in balance. Now, just a couple of other things to remember when you go home. As soon as you return to school, you'll need to make sure that your school nurse, teachers, coach, and bus driver know about your diabetes. You may need to keep supplies at school, and you also want them to know what to do if your blood sugar gets too low or too high. Your diabetes team will be glad to work with them. It's also really important that you wear some sort of medical identification, like a necklace or bracelet, so that if you're not feeling well, people will know that you have diabetes. You will be returning for your first follow-up visit with your diabetes team soon after your diagnosis, and then on a regular basis at three-month intervals. 
Remember that you can always call any member of your team if you have questions. Diabetes can be a big lifestyle change, but this can be made easier by support groups and other activities that you and your parents can attend. There are even diabetes summer camps. Sometimes it's helpful to talk to other people that have had diabetes longer than you. They'll probably understand exactly what you're feeling and might even give you helpful hints that they've learned along the way. I'm sure your doctor, nurse educator, or social worker will be glad to introduce you to other kids. There are all kinds of educational materials about diabetes, too. There are books, websites, and even videos. Hey, like this one! Your team can help you find the very best ones. So I guess that's about it for now. We know that newly diagnosed diabetes can feel overwhelming. But just remember, you are not alone. You have the help of your diabetes care team every step of the way. And once you find the right balance of insulin, diet, and exercise, you'll discover that controlling your diabetes will become a habit, just like brushing your teeth. You'll be able to do everything that other kids do, feel good, and be healthy. It's all just a matter of staying in balance. Take a deep breath, take each day as it comes, you know, hop over, take each obstacle as it is. You know, if your sugar's low, well treat that. Don't worry about, you know, what your dinner sugar is going to be if it's breakfast time. Just take everything as it comes and take it in strides and you'll be fine. It's like I feel more like active and stuff than before and I just feel like more outgoing and not as tired as I used to be and everything. It takes time but you get used to doing the shots and all the other things that come with it. It's it's very easy if you just do what you have to do and you don't even have to worry about it sometimes if you just take your shot, do your blood test and if you're a little low just treat yourself until you're back in range you'll be a-okay. That's all it is to it. <laughs>